Okay, we are here to another integral from the MIT integration B 2015. This is number 12. We have the integral of 1 over square root of x squared plus 25 dx. Okay, I actually saved this problem for last just for this channel because this is the only one I haven't done from MIT 2015. And the reason I saved it is I wanted to do a closer look at trig substitution. Now, typically for an integral like this, you can actually just do this by formula. So you could do it in like two seconds by formula or you could do it really quick just using regular like trig substitution methods and it's pretty routine that way. But again, what I wanna do here is look at this more closely and look at where some of the problems and misconceptions are with this. So now to get started with this and to look into our trig substitution, first we just noticed that we have addition here inside the radical. So this is gonna be the case for our trig substitution. What we usually wanna do is use tangent. So normally, in this case, we'd wanna do something like x equal to tan of t. But now with this 25 here, we could write this as five squared. But what we want to do is incorporate this five in order to make this work. So what I can do is instead of doing x equal tan t, we'll do x equals five tan t. Just noticing when you square that for x squared, this is going to be 25 tan squared of t. And so that way, if you do this out, you can just factor out the 25. Then next, we'll just do our derivative in order to get our dx value. So we'll have dx. Then here, this is going to become derivative of tan t. This is going to become secant squared t dt. And then also what I want to do is just, let's just take this and solve for t. So then from this, I can just divide by five on both sides and we end up with x over five is equal to tan of t. And the way we can isolate t is by just taking arctan on both sides here. So we'll get arctan x over five here, and then we'll have this expression over here on the right. And then normally how we do this, is we just cancel this out and we'd say this is equal to t. But then just notice, this isn't really true all the time. Let's just look at a graph of tan of t. So we have our rough graph over here to the right, and I'm just looking at tan of t between minus pi over two and pi over two. Now in this region here, this is exactly true. This always works. But the thing with tangent is this curve just kind of repeats over and over again forever in both directions. So really for this to work, we really need to restrict t. So we need t that's gonna be between minus pi over two and pi over two. But notice here, even though we've restricted t, we haven't restricted x at all. X can still be anything. And just notice between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, this is going off to infinity in both directions, so we can still get any value. We don't have any restriction on x here, and that's important because notice in our original problem, x can be anything, because this is, we're adding here, and we have the square, so there's no, for any real x, we're never going to have zero or negative numbers here in the denominator. So let's just take this, and we can continue with our substitution. So now coming over here for our dx value, we have 5 secant squared t dt in the numerator. So for x squared, we'll have this, we're gonna have 25 tan squared t plus 25. But then if I just factor a 25 out here, this is gonna become a one. When we bring it outside of the radical, this is just gonna become a five here. But then I can cancel five with five here. And so this here is tan squared t plus one. So this is gonna become secant squared t. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We'll have our secant squared t here in the numerator. We take the square root of secant squared t, this is gonna give me absolute value of secant of t. But now the absolute value is why I made a note of the domain right here. This is from t, we're going from minus pi over two to pi over two. If we look at our unit circle, that's just gonna be quadrants one and four, right? Because this is like our minus pi over two and this is pi over two. But for our t in this region here, well, secant's just one over cosine. All those values of cosine are always positive, so secant so secant of t in quadrants one and four is always positive. So that's gonna allow me to just drop my absolute value right here. But then I can just cancel one of these with one of these, and now we're just integrating secant t. So then integrating this, we'll just do this by formula. This is gonna be natural log absolute value secant t plus tan t. But then this here is actually also always positive. If you just look at it, we write it in terms of sines and cosines. We could just do it like this, and we could write tan as sine t over cosine t. Well, then we're going to have 1 plus sine t over cosine t. But you'll notice the numerator always has to be positive, but sine is never less than negative 1, and cosine of t, again, is always positive here. So again, we can get rid of absolute values right here. We don't need that. And then now I just want to get this back to x. Now we had this, I erased it, but we had this value earlier for tan of t. That tan of t is going to be x over 5. We'll use that to draw the triangle over here. So if our angle is t, and tan over t is x over 5, we can write this as opposite over adjacent, x over 5. And then here we're going to have for this other side, we'll have this is going to become x squared plus 25. So then coming over here for the rewrite, we'll have natural log. 
secant of t is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, so this is going to be square root x squared plus 25 over 5, and then our tan t will be this, x over 5. But then we'll just rewrite again. What I can do is we have common denominator already. I can write this as x squared plus 25 plus x, and we write it all over 5. But then what I can do if I just erase and make a little more space, we can just use log properties on this. So the 5, we can turn this into a, like a subtraction, and I can write this as like minus natural log of 5. But now keep in mind there's a plus c here. This is just a constant value, so this actually goes away because we can just absorb that in our constant. And so for the final solution of this, we just get natural log square root x squared plus 25 plus x plus c, and that's it. And then a couple quick notes on the solution. Again, this is always positive. So again, I mean, we already dropped the absolute value, but if you still had absolute value on here, you could drop it again because you'll see that, you'll just see that because we have the x squared here and we're adding something to it, it's always gonna be greater even if this is negative over here. So this is always positive. And then also we have another way to write this. We could write this as inverse cinch of x over five. Okay, so there you have it. Just kind of an interesting look at trig substitution. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.